Today in this video, I have with me the Proma Master Plus 2024, which is a brand new 3D tablet that released in February of 2024. And it is a high resolution 3D tablet, just like the LoomPad 2 and the NubiaPad 3D. This is what I think is one of the most interesting things about 3D tablets right now, because there really just aren't that many options to compare in the first place. It's hard to know what a good standard is to figure out exactly which one is better than the other in what area. I mean, it's a clear difference between the first generation, the LoomPad 1, which I actually have right here with me. The resolution on this thing compared to the LoomPad 2, NubiaPad 3D, which are both the same thing, and then this one, the Master Plus 2024, is clear lower and you know the moment you view something in 3D. But there are other factors that matter outside of just resolution. In this video I'm going to go through a review of the Master Plus 2024 and let you know just in general how it compares to the other tablets. If you think this sounds cool and you want to know more about these tablets, definitely like and subscribe to this channel because I'm going to be bringing a ton of content like this. I've spent about a week and a half with it and have a good idea of what it does really well, who it's perfect for, and who might be disappointed if they were to purchase this tablet. So where does this one fall in this spectrum of 3D tablets and what makes a good 3D tablet. Well, one of the other new things that's been popular with the recent models is head tracking. And of course, no exception, this one has a front-facing camera that has head tracking. So does the LoomPad 2 and the NubiaPad 3D. The difference here, one of the other biggest problems I've noticed with head tracking is that in the case of the LoomPad 2, you can't turn it off, which means the moment your environment becomes too dim, the head tracking starts to fail and then the 3D will just turn off completely. And that has ruined a lot of moments for me when I am just trying to kick back and watch a movie or videos or content in 3D because a lot of the time it's the most fun to just do that at night to just turn the lights down and if you have to rely on head tracking like this you either have to find some way to light up your face so that head tracking can detect it well or it stops working and then to be honest lighting up the environment just for that purpose kind of defeats the purpose and then the hassle going into setting that all up. Where I'm going with this is that this tablet actually is not the best at head tracking. The Loom Pad 2 actually does a better job tracking your head position. But the thing about this one that feels so refreshing to me is that you can turn head tracking off and there are multiple views, a good number of them, where you can just keep adjusting the angle of the tablet vertically and horizontally to find multiple sweet spots. The range is quite narrow, so I'm going to warn you right now that it is a little bit tricky. I'm not that hard, but tricky to find the sweet spot very quickly and make sure you're right where you need to be. But once you do, you can watch anything. Just turn the lights completely off and watch whatever you want as long as you have it on this tablet. And it feels so nice to be able to do that. I was really missing it with the LoomPad 2. So the problem was LoomPad 1, not enough resolution to make it feel like a great experience that makes me want to keep going back to do that. LoomPad 2, I try, but it doesn't work. And then watching content in the day in the light isn't always as fun. There's sort of a crosstalk issue where LoomPad 2 also struggles with crosstalk, even compared to the original LoomPad 1, where you notice that 3D effects can feel just a little bit softer or like it has less substance. When I'm using this one, I don't feel that way. And I really love that. So what I love is the display, how beautiful the 3D actually works. That is ultimately what I look for. The first thing that I look at and care about the most is how good the 3D looks and feels on these tablets or laptops. And to directly answer the question that is probably on all of your minds, this one in terms of 3D quality and the feel of the actual 3D effect that it produces when you're watching things is close to the best I've ever seen so far. It feels feels kind of like an iPad mini version of the LoomPad 2 with a difference in the display quality, the way the 3D effect feels. Now the display itself is of course built differently. It is not the same technology that goes into the LoomPad 1 or the LoomPad 2, both of which are different from each other anyway. But you can see that the resolution, Chroma actually lists the resolution in 3D for this tablet, whereas Leia has not given a specific number for the true resolution of the LoomPad 2. And my conclusion is that when you're watching stuff on these tablets, they pretty much, for all intents and purposes, resolution-wise, they're essentially equal. It is very hard to find a difference in like the size of a pixel relative to what you're seeing on the screen in 3D when watching stuff between these two tablets. And when you zoom in, you can see that the shape of the pixel is different and they might be just slightly different in size relative to what is being displayed on screen. But the effect you get when you're viewing it 
it resolution wise pretty much exactly the same from what I can tell and I've done a lot of back and forth comparing the two trying to assess this watching videos or looking at different images I'm pretty confident that it's essentially equal but the resolution on this tablet is actually higher than the Lumipad 2 that might sound like it's kind of contradicting what I just said but if you think about it the size of this screen is smaller and if you're watching the same video in the same format and the pixel size relative to the characters and objects looks the same it means that this is packing more pixels into a smaller screen size to keep the same resolution look as the Lumipad 2. If you look real close and you see where the pixels are and how many of them there are for each like face of a character in a movie for example it will look like the same count roughly but they are smaller because this screen is smaller so the resolution overall is higher. Basically it has accomplished what it's set out to do which is to deliver a high resolution 3D experience but on a smaller display size that by the way is the most portable light 3D tablet that I've ever held. It weighs in at just over 500 grams, just like this, whereas the Lumpad 2 is pretty heavy, over 700 grams, and if you add on the case, which I have on all the time, because I don't want to damage the all-important cameras, it's over 800 grams, so you can really feel the difference. This entire time I've been talking, including outtakes, I'm holding this tablet in one hand, just propped on two fingers, my hand doesn't feel tired. It feels very light, so when you're viewing things and watching movies, you can easily hold it like this for an extended period of time and not feel that tired. The Lumpad 2, you won't last very long. So the things I love about this tablet are the level of high resolution 3D that it packs into this smaller display size, that it's light, you can turn off head tracking, and the 3D has a nice solid feel to it with extremely minimal crosstalk. I've compared photos and videos across both tablets to see if the photos and videos I remember that had crosstalk that I was disappointed by on the Lumpad 2 looked any better on this, and they really do. It eliminates almost all of the crosstalk, and where it doesn't completely, it makes it fainter or when crosstalk happens on Lumpad 2 it's pretty painfully obvious and it feels really really nice to view the same things and see that not be there. If you listen this far and you're wondering how do I choose which one to get I feel like there's a very clear answer to it. If you're someone who wants to watch movies on a 3D tablet and you plan to sometimes or often do that in darker environments and kind of just chill and hold your tablet out in front of you prop it up on something you don't want to worry too much about whether or not you damage cameras and protecting it and putting on a case and all that and you don't care about all the other stuff model viewer social media app this is the better option for you I'm almost certain you're going to be more happy with this over a Lumpad 2 or Nubia Pad 3D for the reasons that I just explained you should think of it not so much as a comprehensive 3D tablet as the highest quality 3D image and 3D video viewer out there just to elaborate a little bit more I used to watch videos on Lumpad 2 in 3D like some 3D movies and then I started doing doing it on my Spatial Labs laptop because it offers the highest resolution and most beautiful overall 3D experience. But the downside to this is that it's heavy, doesn't really work in the dark, the level of resolution isn't as high as I would like to be, to the point where I notice when I'm watching, the 3D kind of feels like it lacks a little bit of substance for the movies and also there's just too much crosstalk, doesn't work well in the dark. The Acer laptop is beautiful and I love the way movies look, but it is one heavy laptop, a powerhouse built for gaming. It's not the most comfortable way to sit down and just relax and enjoy a movie and it does make a lot of noise with its fan also suffers from the same head tracking issues that, that the Lumpad 2 does but with this it just feels like such a seamless beautiful sleek chill way to enjoy 3D videos and content, and that's why I love it. So if that's the type of thing you see yourself doing all the time, then this is the one to go with. For everyone else, we have to take a look at the tablet as a whole, because this is called a 3D tablet. The Loompad 2 can do a bunch of other things. Some of the things that make it my favorite tablet in the world, the amazing camera, the fact that you can do 3D video chat, high quality front and rear 3D cameras, and a whole ecosystem of incredible 3D apps that work on the Loompad 2. You can watch my other videos to find out all about the different things that you can do on it, including converting things into 3D. You can hardly do any of those things on this tablet, which is why I keep emphasizing the fact that really you should use this for one thing and one thing only, and that's viewing media, images and videos. Everything else is either non-existent on this or just not good enough to even consider purchasing it for those purposes. Like the camera here, this rear camera, it's a little bit deceiving because it, it would make you think at first glance that this is a stereo 3D camera, but it is actually not. It's just a single camera. The way you take 3D photos on this is interesting, I have to admit. It's a fascinating way to do it because it has you take a photo and then slide over a centimeter as instructed, take a second photo and then it'll automatically on the spot process that and then turn it into a 3D photo for your viewing on the tablet right away. Problem 
problem there is not so much the method which is a little bit clunky more that there's no like options to edit it after you take it the biggest one of all is just that the resolution is really bad it reminds me of the 3d resolution of the pictures you would get on the nintendo 3ds not only not be like blown away by the 3d quality of the photos taken on this it's gonna be pretty low resolution not worth considering purchasing this tablet for that also this runs on android 12 but just don't quite understand there's nothing on this tablet it's completely bare bones there is no app store no google play store this product is coming from china so i think that is the reason but you're not getting a google play store you can't download other apps you really have nothing there's just a gallery files music settings camera calendar calculator browser sound recorder clock and then the 3d media viewer and that is it that is literally all you get on this tablet no games you're not getting anything else so if you want the apps if you want the 3d ecosystem do not buy this tablet for those things buy it as a 3d media player that gives you gorgeous 3d for the things that you want to view on a really nice feeling size display but for everything else you won't find it on this tablet and the other kind of interesting quirky thing about this is that the way you view 3d media and images is that it's all contained within this one app called 3d fan so you open up 3d fan and then right away you're presented with a couple demo videos and some of these are actually really cool this was my first experience of 3D on this tablet was watching these demo videos and it impressed me right off the bat because of how good this 3D display actually is. There aren't that many of them. The 3D is supposed to be kind of this video demoing how pop-out feels, you know, it's like highlighting that pop-out feel for 3D. And because this tablet has limited crosstalk, this stuff actually looks really good and the resolution is so crisp. It's like I feel the excitement and the joy of 3D every time I watch these videos and watch stuff on this because it just looks so good. It's fun to watch these just to relive that sensation of experiencing really great 3D on this size display and at this quality over and over again. But you can't buy a tablet just for demo videos and things like that. The main thing that you're going to be using this for is your local file. When you store files, this company has a guide on their website that shows you where to put your 3D files, videos, and photos if you want to find them and view them on this. And it has a bunch of preloaded side-by-side -side images of flowers and things like that. When you click on them and open it up, it immediately displays in 3D, similar to the Loompad 2. But one of the disappointing things about this to me is that you can't pinch to zoom in and out. It's not a deal breaker by any means, but it would be cool to be able to do that, to keep like this level of resolution. And then the other point that I didn't get to yet, but just adds on top of a repeated emphasis of you should buy this if you want to use it as a 3D media viewer is that it allows you to view things in portrait orientation vertically in 3D which is so cool because it's the first time I've ever seen that done on a high resolution 3D display so it's exciting for me and it feels really cool to view stuff that looks beautiful like that check out this tower I generated this with AI Adobe Firefly and then converted it using Layapix and when you view it like this it's just one of the most gorgeous things that I've ever seen in 3D this this level of detail and quality and to be able to go back and forth between portrait and landscape it's sorely missing in Loompad 2. Makes me just want to make like a thousand of these, scroll through and view them because of how cool it looks and how large the display is. I mean, it's smaller than Loompad 2, but when you turn it vertically like this and view it in 3D, I've never seen anything like this before. So to me, it's just really lovely. And even with photos, technically, if you rotate it, it will squash the photo, display it to you in 3D in portrait orientation, which I think is super cool. I mean, it all ends up looking a little bit unnatural if you scroll through and view because they get squashed out of proportion, but it's still looks cool to see stuff in 3D in this orientation because I'm really not used to it and I've always wanted to see it at this resolution and this display size. A lot of the 3D photos that I brought over to test on this actually are taken by the Loompad 2 because I love the way the photos turn out. It's just incredible. The, the camera, I think, is one of the best 3D cameras out there. How convenient it is to take pictures and things like that. So I want to view them on this to see how good they look on this. And they look equally good, just on a smaller display size. You have to export them to SBS, which is very easy in Layer Player. And then you can just bring them right over to this and they'll be displayed to you automatically in 3D. You can't view them in the native Leia image format. Otherwise, it won't display on this tablet, of course. Another thing that you can do that I like is just adjust brightness of videos and photos just by sliding your finger down, up and down on the image or video while you're viewing it to adjust the brightness. So it's a very smooth UI element that I really like. And if you're watching a video and you do the same thing on the right hand side, it actually adjusts the volume. So it feels very intuitive and smooth. This app is a little bit slow when you scroll from photo to photo. It kind of takes a second to load as you're scrolling, so it is not the fastest to respond, but it's fast enough where it doesn't bother me. This photo, for example, was taken on my iPhone 15 Pro. 
in spatial photo mode. And normally what happens when you view something like this, like on the Loompad 2, I'll show you, is that the image will always display in a format that has some sort of black bars, whether it's full SPS or half SPS, none of it perfectly fits the size of the Loompad 2. What this tablet does for you that I like is that it automatically stretches your iPhone 15 photos. So on the Loompad 2, I can pinch and zoom to fill the screen, which is cool. I mean, I love that feature, but this one does it automatically for you. So I feel like I'm just skimming through photos that were taken on my iPhone 15 Pro that are naturally a perfect fit to this display because it does that for you. So that's another thing I really like about the way this software works. From what I can tell, when you put things into this folder, and even if you create folders within it, they all just end up in this same spot, in this local tab. So I don't see the folders that I created. When I go and view the data on my computer, everything is still compartmentalized into the folders that I created. But when I go and look at it here, it's all for better or for worse thrown together in the same gallery. If you have thousands of photos, I'm not sure it can even handle that much because I've tested it without the ability to put things into different photos and sort like that thing. It might get a little bit difficult to scroll through and locate things. It's just one of the potential problems that I would expect to encounter while using this to view large volumes of videos or photos. But outside of that, it really does have a decent amount of storage. I mean, I put a good amount of videos and things on this and it has hardly filled it up at all. One of the things I think is an, another potential disappointing thing is that it has a micro SD card slot, but there's no way that I can figure out to actually make this app access anything that you would even put on it. You have to store things in the local storage folder that belongs to this app in order for it to be displayable in 3D. Unless you want to use this to store a bunch of 2D files and view them in 2D, the micro SD card slot is here. It's a little bit pointless. So I really hope that they update that in the future because it would be nice to be able to store a large amount of files on this and then just view them seamlessly in 3D, which you can do on the Loompad 2. There are some specific options, like you can make a profile and have browsing history, downloads, favorites. I mean, if you go to this middle tab, you can enter a URL in this middle bar and pull up a YouTube video, view it, and it'll display it to you in 3D, as long as you're navigating to that URL within this app. So that's another cool feature of this tablet, is that you can view things online in 3D, as long as they're already in side-by-side -side format by searching for them and viewing them through this web browser that's built into this app. But it's a little bit unstable and I think that it's going through China as a network, so it doesn't always work that quickly. And I wouldn't use this as a main reason to own this tablet. I just think you should know that it is something else that you can do. Then there's also this kind of Facebook style social media app. It appears to be something that you should be able to follow people on and post images and videos. I see a bunch of yoga 3D videos. I've tested some of them out. Two problems, one is that they load a bit slowly and I feel like some of them just kind of stop in the middle of the video. Second problem is I couldn't find out a way to post my own videos. So this would be nice if it was a real social media type of thing where I could post my own images and photos in 3D and share them with people like you can on Layapix in 3D directly. On this one, all I see is this, this one person's yoga videos and no way to add my own and nothing from anybody else. So this is not an active social media service yet. I don't think anybody uses this. I mean, part of the reason is because this tablet was just released. I don't think hardly anybody owns it yet. But even if they did, they really got to change this to make it so anybody can post onto this social media thing. Otherwise, it's not that useful for us. Similarly to the photos, the videos taken on the iPhone 15 Pro. I took the spatial video using the regular spatial video mode on my iPhone 15 Pro, and it turns out really nice. Like, I don't have to make any adjustments. The crosstalk is much more minimal to really non-existent compared with the Loompad 2, where I always notice it with the misalignment for the iPhone 15 Pro videos that I take that are spatial videos. So I've kind of stopped watching them on my Loompad 2 because it's not that enjoyable. There's just too much crosstalk misalignment that I can't go in and adjust. Well, with this one, I'm not sure if it's 100% aligned, but there really isn't any crosstalk. So it makes it so that I don't notice and it's just much more enjoyable to watch. So this is the tablet I'm going to be going to in the future when I view my spatial videos. Last thing about the brightness that I forgot to mention is that I've compared the brightness between the Loompad 2 and this tablet, and this one does not get as bright. The main reason I would say that that's not a big deal is because a lot of the time it's bright enough where stuff still looks gorgeous. When I watch videos on this, as I mentioned over and over again, it's going to be in the dark. In those situations, it feels plenty bright because I can just turn off head tracking and view it in any way that I want in 3D where brightness is absolutely a non-issue in those situations. If you ask me to be super nitpicky about the 3D resolution, just same with the Loompad 2. If you look hard, you can see pixelation. But when you're watching something, from what I've experienced, really on both, but more so on this one, when things kind of come to a 
standstill, people are just standing there and things slow down, that's when I might notice it more. But when there's any type of really engaging stuff going on, I don't notice it at all. One of the most important considerations when thinking about what 3D tablet to purchase is the price. And this thing right now on the promo website is $739, which I think puts it right at the sweet spot between the price that the Nubia Pad 3D2, which is $1,000 plus, dollars, I'm guessing around $1,100, which was the starting price for the Nubia Pad 3D, the original one, and the current Loom Pad 2, which is down price as of today, I think, $499, which is a ridiculously low price for what you get on this 3D tablet, which is going to be outdated as soon as the Nubia Pad 3D2 arrives, and that is the reason that it's happening. That is just a steal for everything you can get on the Loom Pad 2. However, the catch is that it's really only available within the United States, and you could probably find a way to purchase it and have it shipped to you, but then you'd have the additional international shipping costs and things like that to worry about. It's really intended for US customers only. They also don't support warranty or anything like that for people who are trying to obtain a Loom Pad 2 from outside the United States. Leia doesn't support any of that. So those are things to take into consideration when thinking about whether or not you get a Loom Pad 2. If you think it sounds good, I, I would recommend it hands down. Just my only reservation would be that this one could potentially be a better fit for you depending on the use cases that you're looking for. And then the Nubia Pad 3D2 is going to be better in every single way. So if you can wait and you're not too worried about the cost, then definitely wait. That just about covers it for this brand new 3D tablet that I am very fond of now. And I'm sure Sure, there's stuff that I forgot to cover but if you think of any questions that you have just let me know and I'll try to check it out for you yeah I hope that having watched this video you have a good idea of whether or not this tablet is for you it's not for everyone but there are certain people out there that I think it is perfect for and I hope I've done a good job explaining that in this video if you enjoyed this video and you thought it was useful or helpful to you definitely give it a like and subscribe to this channel if you haven't yet I really appreciate you watching and I have more exciting content to come I'll try to get even more products like this so I can show you even more exciting 3D tech that's out there, like the Nubia Pad 3D2 that is on the way. It could blow all these tablets out of the water. We won't know until it's actually here and I get my hands on it and test it for myself. It's kind of impossible to say how far above and beyond it goes compared to all the competition that exists right now. I am super excited to experience it and all the other new 3D products that are going to just storm the market over the next couple of years. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.